So in recent writings, I've proposed a three-step therapy program. This is um, a, um, a, a sequence of, of therapies that you would use in the context of what's called cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, especially exposure therapy. Now, in exposure therapy, normally what you do is bring the patient into the office and um, expose the person to the, the threats um, and other the, the stimuli that are giving them trouble. And with repeated exposures, at first the person will be highly aroused and unhappy and upset, uh, but with more exposures, the, um, the response is weakened. Uh, the problem is, even though that is sometimes effective, that the, uh, the effects are temporary often and can be reactivated, can be eliminated by stress. Um, so a person who's successfully treated for a fear of heights and the person's mother dies, for example, and the fear of heights comes back. So, uh, and we, we've known this uh, since Pavlov's earliest days of using what's called extinction in the laboratory, which is what exposure therapy is based on. So extinction is just repeating a stimulus over and over until the rat or mouse or dog in Pavlov's case stops responding. It's common to think of exposure therapy as extinction, but that turns out to be misguided. Exposure therapy is really much more. It involves a lot of kind of back and forth talk, in other words, talk therapy between the, the patient and the uh, therapist. It involves often uh, relaxation training, learning to breathe and kind of relax because the, the cues are going to be stressful. Uh, it involves comp uh, cognitive coping skill training uh, and, and even more talk therapy. So it, it's a very kind of top-down heavy process um, but extinction is a kind of bottom-up process. So when we do extinction in the laboratory, we don't talk to them. We bring them in and just give the stimulus over and over again, whether it's a person or a rat, you're just doing stimulus repetition. But in therapy, it's a very top-down heavy process. And I think that may be interfering uh, both with the top-down processes, in other words, with the talk therapy you're trying to do, and with the extinction therapy you're trying to do under the guise of exposure. So my three-step program is first you do unconscious extinction, which means you use subliminal stimulation to present the trigger cues. For example, if you have a spider phobic, you show the pictures of the spider non-consciously by presenting them very fast, very briefly, with a mask following it so that the person doesn't see the spider, so their conscious mind is not freaking out about the spider. They may be getting aroused by it, but they don't know why. So the idea is, then is that through non-conscious extinction, we can rein in the amygdala so that it's no longer generating arousal in the body and brain. Once we've done that non-consciously, we can turn to conscious exposures. Now that the conscious exposures no longer produce the arousal, it's easier for the conscious mind to take the exposures and for it to, uh, for those associations in, in, in conscious memory to be weakened. And with the conscious memories weakened, then the conscious thought process can interact with the therapist's conscious thought process where they can talk about coping strategies, life skills, um, what what, how the person can now adapt to the world in a different way because of um, the reduction of these uh, responses that they have. And so it gives the, the opportunity to partition the mind uh, through experimental procedures that come out of brain research in a way that might have more effectively allow the process uh, to get started so that ultimately talk therapy can kick in and be done in a more effective way.